Hi guys, uh, I'm creating a supplement video to class three of the Proteus lectures. The reason I'm doing this is because I don't want to spend an inordinate amount of time during the lectures just going through the process of creating parts. However, there are, there's quite a lot of material to cover in creating parts. So I've broken out um, some of this material outside of the lecture so that anybody can come and watch this video um, and if you are not sure how to create a part that's part of this course you can you can see here how we create every single part um, you might be able to intuit some of this yourself and figure it out yourself uh, but it's here anyway uh, for, for in case you need it so we're going to create four parts that's then going to complete the parts list that we need to create our headphone amplifier um, the first part is going to be a DC-DC converter and it's this particular one that you can see here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to head to minimize that. Nope. Close that. Cool. So just as a quick recap, uh, I've got the text visible here. So I went to templates set text styles and then you can go to properties and make that text here visible or not at the moment it's visible um, okay so this is where you should be after class 2 all of these devices have been made fully you've checked the footprints and you've checked the pins and everything you know now that this will all work when you place it on your on your schematic so DCD to converter, I'm going to use a linear regulator as a template to create my DC DC converter. Um, so I'm but even though these devices are very different. So I'm going to decompose this and now it's just elements, it's just you know vectors and pins and stuff. So the reason why I've met, made the uh, the properties text clear uh, visible is so that you can see this box. This box is invisible usually when you decompose a device, um, and that's the properties for the linear regulator. So I'm going to go to Farnell uh, and I'm going to open the part and then the data sheet. Now the data sheet's here, and this is the device. So it's three watts. You can feed it. Uh, anywhere between 9 and 18 volts and it's going to give you give us a 15 volt plus minus 15 volt rail plus minus 100 milliamps that will be plenty to drive our headphones with um, so where do we begin so the first thing that I like to do is make sure that our device symbol matches the actual component so we can see here that the pinout for this device uh, is the dual version and we have the standard pinout rather than the NP version. The NP version, if you find this little asterisk here, so for certain models you can get like an industry standard pinout. We're only buying, we're, we're purchasing the non-industry standard pinout, uh, otherwise this part would have dash NP at the end. So. And we've got the dual version plus minus 15 volts these are our pins for the package oh the other thing to note is that it is a dill 24 package now i'll get to that uh, part later so let's sort our pins out now i know that this device has got i'm going to put that over there it's got two input pins and it's got three output pins so all i'm doing is copying and pasting pins there you can place your pins by using the pin tool here and you've got various different types of pins I usually use default or you can use short as well short pins default pins cool now it's time to uh, set these pins up properly so I'm going to call this one plus V in according to the table here uh, and plus V in is actually on pins 1 and pin 24. Plus V in, plus V in. So 1, comma, 24. Now we know that whatever package associated with this device, that will 
be picked up on pins 1 and 24. And then we've got minus V in. And that is on ah, pins 12 and 13. Oh, you can click next here at the bottom or page up and page down and that also skips you to the next sort of nearest pin, which is a really nice feature. And then we've got plus out. So plus V out on 11 and 14. Cool. And then we've got minus V out on pins 2 and 23. And then we also have common, which is the center point for the output voltage rails. So com 3, 10, 15, 22. A lot of common pins on this device. Great. Oh, uh, one thing. Now we've got all these numbers. We don't necessarily need all these numbers on the schematic uh, denoting the package pins. So I'm going to go back onto the properties and uncheck draw number. Use page up, uncheck, page up, uncheck, and there we go. Right, so we're, we're nearly ready to turn this into a device. It, we haven't sorted out the footprint yet. So what I'm going to do is go into the PCB layout section. As I mentioned before, this is based on a basic uh, DIL24 package very very commonly used uh, DIL24 package and here you can actually see the pinouts uh, and the dimensions for that. Proteus comes with a DIL24 so if I search DIL24 there's lots of dueling lines and lots of singling lines in Proteus so I'm going to place the DIL24 standard package like so. So obviously we've got a lot less pins on our device and the silk screen is different as well. So what I'm going to do is modify this package and then save it as our switch mode DIL24 package. So the way to do that is I've placed just a, a, a generic one on the PCB and then I'm going to decompose. Now straight off the bat we know that we're only using pins 1 to 3, 10 to 11, uh, sorry 10 to 12. So we can delete essentially all of these pins and these 1, 2, 3, 10, 11, 12 and the same on the opposite side. Notice though we're looking at the top down on the package here and here we're looking at the bottom up it says bottom view so just bear in mind that imagine you're looking at the bottom of something or the top the pins are kind of inverted along the x-axis Right, so firstly, I just want to double check that these pins are in fact the right dimensions. So I'm going to, so as we can see here, between the pins, we've got 15.24 mil or 0.6 inches uh, between the, the pin rows. Uh, the pitch of the pins is 2.54 mil or 0.1. If we, if we use the because it's been specified really in uh, Imperial, we'll use that for now. So 0 0.6 and 0 0.1. Now we can check that by maximizing this and then we can measure the, 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 the distance between the pins and the pin rows um, by just use, just drawing a, a line and holding the, you know, hovering the line between the two pins. We're on a metric, if you can see in the bottom right, we're on a metric grid. If I press M, it changes to an imperial grid. And then all of our measurements come in imperial. So all I'm doing here is clicking once and then allowing that to center on that pin. And if you can look, if you can see here, we've got 100 thou, which is 0.1 inch. And then we've got 600 thou, which is 0.6 of an inch. So we know that this package is the pins on the package are dimensioned properly. The only other thing we need to do now is draw this box to denote the silk screen outline. Uh, I'm also going to put a fiducial. They're just the properties for the original package. Uh, so I'm going to draw. I'm going to change the, 
the pitch of the grid that I'm using to quite a narrow pitch. I'm going to draw a little circle and then right click, edit properties, edit style, fill, solid, just to make it a solid little fiducial so that we can mark where pin 1 is. Change the grid back to something a bit more reasonably large. Um, so what we need to do now is draw this box. Now the, the, the box, the silk screen box is going to be 20 millimeters by 32 millimeters. So obviously that's imperial, uh, metric. So press M again. Can't see that. So press M, we're, we're back in the millimeters grid. And I'm going to draw. Now you can see the width at the, at the bottom middle of the, uh, the information toolbar you can see width and height. So 20 by 32, I think. Let's just double check that. 20, 32. So that's our box. Now we can all, so I'm, I'm now going to delete all of the silk screen that we don't need. And obviously I'm going to have to move that for a little bit as well. What we want to do is center this box around these pins uh, as best as possible because um, that's how this package is the, 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 the pins are exactly central to the to the box around it and the easiest way to do that is to work out what the distance is between let's say pin 12 and that edge and pin 12 and that edge so we want to check that our box meets these two edges so we've got these two dimensions. We've got 15.24 and 20. So if we subtract that by that and divide by two, that gives us this little distance and that little distance. So because I'm being lazy, 20 minus 15.24 divided by two, 2.38. Okay. So I need to. I I know that it's, let's say from this pin, any of the corner pins, we need to have 2.38 mils between that and this edge. So the, w the way to do that would be to use false origin. So if I press O on the keyboard, and I'm, I'm tapping O there, uh, you can see that it's creating an origin, a false origin, wherever that O is. So what I'm going to do is create a false origin right in the middle of this pin. So hover over the pin, press O, and now that false origin's there. You can tell it's a false origin's place because we've got purple um, text at the bottom. When there's no false origin, it's not purple. Great. So now I can draw a line going sort of vertical. And I know that this dimension needs to be uh, 2.38. So I've drawn that line. And now I can double click and edit this. And it, it actually gives you X and Y coordinates for both of these green sort of positions here. So if you've created your false origin, that'll be zero, zero, X and Y. And this one is uh, four, zero for, or zero, four for X and Y. But I'm going to change that to 2.38. Now I know that that is exactly 2.38 mils long. Okay, so I'm going to do the same for the other direction. And we're going to subtract. Now that is as close to 28 millimeters as we would ever care for. So I'm going to do, so that's obviously the difference <laughs> is four. Um, and you divide four by two, which means we want the, this edge of the box to be two millimeters away. And I think because of the grid snaps, the grid snaps are currently in one millimeter. So one, two millimeters, that's the, the length. So obviously this box doesn't exactly align at the moment. So what we can do is change the grid snap to the fine snap. So I'm going to press control and F1 and that gives us a fine snap. If you want to modify the snaps, you go to technology, set grid snaps, and you can see your imperial snaps and you can see your metric snaps. Now these are important to, to take note of and understand. Um, so I'm currently in 0.1 millimeter pitch. So each one of these squares is 0.1 millimeters, as you can see by the width at the bottom there changing. Now I'm going to adjust this so that it as it it, it lines over these 
edges as best as possible. Now the bottom one there, this one's perfect. The top one is a tiny, tiny fraction out. We don't care. <laughs> that is absolutely fine. Um, so there it is. So that's that's the package ready. Awesome. So I'm going to put that finish out there. And I'm not going to keep any of the properties of the DIL24 package because I'm essentially creating a new one. Uh, I'm going to put the snap, the grid snaps back into something reasonable. And then we're going to make this package. Now I'm going to call this the name of our device. Is there a better way? Now these, this is all this the same series. So I might even call it Tel3 because they're all the same series. I am going to call it Tel3. So I'm going to call it Tel3 and I'm also going to call it DIL24 because it's very highly based on a DIL24. It is a discrete component through hole. Put it in the through hole library. I don't think yours will come up to because I've done this before, so I'll, it'll ask me to rename stuff, but that's fine. Excellent. So we ha we now have both parts ready. We've got the footprint ready. We've got the device pins and all that ready. So I'm going to delete the properties of the old thing that we, uh, you know, the we when we decompose that, we don't need those properties. I'm going to highlight the whole thing. Right click, make a device. Now I'm going to call this SMPS. Bear in mind this is uh, descriptive because this is what you'll be searching in the library. Plus minus 15 volts and it's 100 milliamps per channel. Reference designator is going to be U. And then if I search TEL3, the one that we just made is TEL3 DIL24. I've, I've made this device a few times so that's the one that we just made. Now I just want to check the pins so if I so we've got plus V in, plus V in, minus V out, minus V out, to make sure that these are mirroring each other. Com, com, and these two are com as well. Plus V out, plus V out, minus V in, minus V in. So plus V in, minus V out, plus V in, minus V out, and then we've got the four commons, one, one, two, three, four, and then we've got plus V out, minus V in, plus V out, minus V in. So that is, I'm happy with that. This will match up. It's going to fit. Good stuff. So this is where the properties are for this device. Because we're making this device sort of from scratch and we haven't had the previous um, properties, we just deleted those before we created this, you know, before we started to make this device. You could either click new and add your stockist, add your stockist part number, add your value and, and manufacturer and blah, blah, blah. Or you can just make it all and then add the custom component script afterwards. And it's a lot quicker to do that, so that's what I'm going to do. The device category, we have switching devices. Generic. And then we can put in here any other descriptions that we want. Um, I don't think we need any other description for this, actually. So I'm going to leave that as is. Uh, but this again that's that's searchable when you pick the device if there's anything else you want to put in there to help you find it again put it in there put it in the chips library yes I want to replace it only because I've made it before you don't need to do that so I deleted that one and now I'm placing a new one this is our device excellent so now I'm going to go back into my custom component scripts off screen Double click this and paste all that stuff in here and press OK. Now, when I make device, you'll see that I've got all these things filled in. Well, they're present. Now I need to fill them in. So the value is the name of the part in this case. So that's what's going to appear on the schematic. So I'm just going to put the manufacturer's part number in there. The voltage is 
Now I usually go for the output voltage for these. So plus minus 15 volts. Current. Uh, current handling capabilities. 100 milliamps. Power. 3 watts. Remember that from the data sheet. Tolerance. Not going to put anything there. Manufacturer is Traco Power. Manufacturer part number. Stockist is Farnell. Oops. Stockist part number. Special is nothing <laughs> and generic. It's not generic. Excellent. So that's done there. Do you want to replace it? You will, I don't, oh yeah, you will need to replace it this time because you will have made it. Okay, okay, delete the old one, place the new one, job done. Great, so we've finished creating our DC-DC converter. Let's have a look what is left to do. So jumping back to the presentation, uh, we've got an LED next. So we're going to take a look at this Farnell part here. Um, it comes in an 080, uh, sorry, an 0603 package. We're going to prove that our 0603 package works. Um, just a little tip there and mark the diode with a dot and a bar. Right, so that will all make sense once I start making the device. So we have to make a diode. Now, this is one of those cases where we can have a look in the Proteus libraries and search for LED uh, and there we can see there's a really generic if you typed LED generic, that would help that, that search quite a lot. So I've obviously made this device before, <laughs> so we'll ignore that one. Okay, so we'll select LED here because that's what you'll have. Click, click, placed. Now this time I'm going to get rid of the um, text styles properties. So there's no invisible boxes yet. Oh, there's that one. That that one just says text, but that's that's always there. There's no properties. There's no big invisible properties box with this device yet. Um, we are happy with this symbol. That is exactly the symbol that we want. So I'm going to leave that alone. The one thing that we need to check is the footprint. So I'm going to go to Farnell. I'm going to go to here. Type Farnell in there. This is the LED. So we've got a little divot, as you can see, on the package there, and it's telling us that it's an 0603 package. Now, when you go into the data sheet, um, does it say 0603? No, it doesn't mention 0603 inside of this uh, data sheet at all because it gives all of its measurements in in metric, and 0603 is an imperial measurement. Problem with that is, is that 0603 and 0805 and all those others are really commonly used um, when selecting resistors and capacitors and that kind of thing. So we just want to make sure, because you can't trust anything that the distributor's website says, we want to make sure that if it really is an 0603 package, that it is going to work. And there's a quick and easy way to do that. So we will select the one that we're using. So we've got HSMG C190. Uh, and then we've got these drawings, so this is C150, C170, HSMG C190, so this here is our device that we want to place, that's the polarity, uh, it's saying that's cathode but with this particular one, the HSMH, that's the anode, no idea why they do that, but we haven't got that one, we've got HSMG. Cool. So first thing is we're going to place the 0603. Get rid of that one. I'm going to get rid of this footprint. We don't need that for now. So I've got 0603 already in the part selector. You can just search for it if you need it. And place it on the schematic. Right. Now what I want to do is draw, essentially draw this component and see whether it'll just physically fit into this footprint visu visually. So the way to do that is we've got 1.6 mils end to end, we've got 0 0.8, oh, not mils, millimetre, there's a difference between mils and millimetres. Mils is the thou, 
you know, the, the imperial measurement. So 1.6 millimeters by 0 0.8 millimeters. So I'm going to draw a box. And I'm going to put a false origin in the corner. Let's bang in the corner there. I think I had to select the device then to allow me to. So if the device isn't selected, it won't do it. If the device is selected, it will put it in the corner. So that's definitely worth noting. Open the properties. Uh, now the X and Y coordinates are from the center. So the X and Y coordinates are from the center. That's one kind of little frustrating thing about that. Does that matter? Uh, the width and the height. Okay, I think you can just edit those. 0 0.8, 1 0.6. 1 0.8 millimeters. You have to put mm as well. If you put thou here, that just works as 0 0.8 thou, which would be very small. And the other one was 1.6, wasn't it? 1.6. Okay, that works. Excellent. Uh, I'm going to now make the edge of this box tiny. So edit, edit style, not follow global, and make it one thou because that's I want the, just a precise outline. And all I'm going to do now is put the grid on the smallest size I can on millimeters and then move it around. Now, the smallest grid on millimeters is bigger than the smallest grid on thou by default. So I'm going to press M to jump to thou. And now the grid's absolutely minuscule. And you see the granularity is just crazy. That will fit absolutely fine. That's no problem at all. Now, the one extra thing that you could do, just to be absolutely certain, is you can change that back. Make sure the false origin is bang on in that corner. And you can even put the pads on the device as well. So if I was going to put the pads on the device, uh, you can see that the width of the pads is 0 0.3. So if I put a line in 0 0.3 millimeters, now this grid size, size is, if you look at the bottom here as I'm doing this, one, two, three, so that I'm on 0 0.1 grid size and I've already aligned the grid to this corner. So one, two, three, point three, like so. 0.3, right click, edit the style, 1 thou. I could have done both at the same time there. I'm just press S to select. That's a keyboard shortcut that I've made though, so you, you'll have to click that arrow. Okay, now go back to the thou thing to make it really smooth. Yeah, look at that. It'll be absolutely fine. So we know now, I mean, you could even shrink, you could create a package that shrinks this area a little bit, but I'm really not bothered about that. So we can use the default uh, 0603 package. So next thing, this is a diode, okay? So it's got a polarity. How are we going to indicate the polarity? Two ways. One is putting that fiditional on there, and two, we can put the bar on there as well. So we know that it's the cathode mark, which is the front, so the bar is at the front and we've got a dot at the front as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to decompose this package. Did that work? Yes. Uh, I'm going to put it on a reasonable grid size for this size of parts, which control and F1 will give us a, a grid, a, a metric grid to work on. This. Now I think what I'm actually going to do is put the false origin in the middle of that pad, go to the imperial I am on the imperial grid because this is an imperial pad. Uh, in fact, it doesn't matter because I'm going to put the false origin at this point. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I'm going to put a line from down there to here, which is in the middle of that. So that's exactly meets. And that is going to indicate, like, you know, the bar part of a diode. If our diode is like that. You know, and then the other thing I'm going to do is the same as I put on the other. Select the circle tool, and I put a little fiditional there. Look at that, beautiful. Now the reason why that's filled is because yeah, I'll have to draw it a bit bigger. It's not actually filled. It's just the fact that the 
thickness of the material is thick enough that it just covers it. So that's absolutely fine. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to faff around that. <laughs> Don't need to do that. Uh, I'm going to change the num the names of these pins. So I'm going to go to a slightly bigger grid size. Sometimes when you're on a very fine grid, it's hard to select a pin unless you go a pad. Sorry, when, unless you go right to the middle. See, There's I've only got that tiny little range. I think it's the ta the smallest square. In the or yeah, it's, you see, you have to hover over right in the middle. If you create the, uh, if you change the grid size to something big, that space gets a lot bigger. So if you're struggling to select a, uh, a pad, change your grid size. Double click that. I'm going to call it C cathode A anode. Now we're talking. I'm going to select all of that. The pro that was the previous properties for the 0603 package. And I'm going to check that I'm still recording. Yeah, good. <laughs> I did this before and I, I, I stopped recording. Uh, I'm going to go 0603. I'm going to call it underscore diode. I've got the word diode in here actually, so I don't really need to modify that. I'm going to save it in my surface mount package library. Yes, I've already made one, so it doesn't matter. Delete that, place it, check it. Anode, cathode. Excellent. Now we are ready to create this LED. Uh, and because this LED actually doesn't contain the properties that, that, it, that we want it to, we can open our custom component list, copy and paste that text, and stick it in there. And now when we come to make the device, we've got LED there. We can add our LED footprint. It's complaining about the not checked package because that's the custom, custom script telling us that we've not checked that package yet. Uh, let's go into there. Oh, 603. Diode. Look at that. Now, for some reason, Proteus, this must be, it might be something that I am not privy to, uh, but they, they put the letter K for cathode. That might be some, uh, uh, maybe a distinction between C capacitor, even though that's the difference between a pin name and a reference designator. I don't know. There's a re there must, that, I, I suspect there's a, a legacy reason why cathodes are spelt with a K on pins, but I don't know it and I don't really care. So, A, anode. C, cathode, uh, K, or C for cathode. Sign the package. Next. Right. Now, this particular model, uh, this device in the libraries, came with a bunch of properties we don't care about. So, primitive, we don't need. Don't know what that is. Delete, 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 delete. So, we're just left with our standard list of properties that we want for our schematics. The value of this, I'm going to call it... Now I'm going to call it green LED. LED, green. That's what's going to appear on the schematic. Voltage. Now, usually I would put the forward voltage drop of the LED because that's what you need to overcome to get some current flowing through it. Uh, so, now the reverse voltage is only 5 volts as well, so it wouldn't make a very good reverse blocking diode. Uh, we've got a forward current of 20 milliamps because that's uh, two different technologies there. See HSM G C190. These I suspect these will be different types of colours, but I'm just going to stick with 20 milliamps. Um, They should have put a space in there, uh, forward slash, but there you go, green. Forward voltage maximum is 2.6, so I'm going to stick that in here. And if you want, you can even put the F, just so you, re so you know exactly what that means. The current is 20 milliamps, might be 25 for the technology, but for the, in the interest of 
speed um, unless it just tells us quickly what type of materials it's made out of nah I'm just going to put 20 milliamps for now power I'm just going to leave as not relevant in that tolerance ok so manufacturer Broadcom manufacturer part number you can just click that and it should copy it from Farnell website the stockist is Farnell oops stock is part number that one nothing special about this is it generic? no uh, I'll tell you what I'm going to put that it's green in the special category Optoelectronics electronics LEDs it's already selected that pack that uh, subcategory and stuff because it already had previous properties uh, I'm going to put green there surface mount device that's absolutely fine and I'm going to put it in semiconductors because it is a type of semiconductor and then we delete that place that excellent so there is our second package and second device okay so there's our LED next is a volume potentiometer with a built-in switch it's a Mauser part and we're going to add a default uh, device from Symaxis uh, since Proteus has that integra integrated now you will might have to you might have to create a uh, component search engine login before this works for you I've already done that so I won't need to do it um, we're going to check the footprint since it's one that we've imported just sort of randomly from a, a user and then we're going to we're going to import two devices from the Proteus libraries and create our own device from those two so how do we do that so the first things first is we're going to go to the Mauser website uh, and we're going to find the part number for this and the, and the specific part sorry so this is our uh, potentiometer I believe it's a 10k it's got two gang it's a 10k so you've obviously got left and right volume all on the same potentiometer you don't want one channel you know two independent left right volumes um, oh the other thing to note about this part is that it's log it's got a log uh, let's not say it there profile so might be able to get a graph of it somewhere yes so this is man, the, the part name is ridiculous this is an A series taper it says A at the top there so as you can see it's it changes its resistance a little bit and then it'll change it a lot now this is so that it's it's, it's actually better for um, audio purposes because our, our ears are more sensitive at lower volume levels so you need to follow sort of like a log um, audio profile as you uh, as you increase in voltage so that's why we use a log taper potentiometer so what we can do oh so this is the part here it's dual gang uh, it's got a switch and it's got resistor 1 and resistor 2 uh, we start we've got a PTR902 PTR902 so that's definitely the device and we have a little PCB layout thing here got the schematic so this is quite nice actually because it's all in one place all this information it's you're not jumping up and down the, the data sheet so what I'm going to do is for this one I'm going to search this manufacturer part number in Proteus and what you'll notice is that 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 wouldn't be there that's my personal library so imagine that nothing appeared here okay but you've got these two buttons at the bottom so I'm going to click let's have a look at uh, the results from some access it works straight off the bat for me because I've already got a, a login I think when you press that first time you'll have to put some a username and password in that, that it remembers now it has this device here so we can click that uh, and there we go so this is from component search engine that's a website component search engine.com uh, and 
this is the part that we've got that we that we can potentially use to, to sort of base our our device from. So you can see that the actual device in the schematic is a bit crappy. Like you could do a better job than just have a block with pins as a as a device. But the actual footprint looks pretty decent. So let's import that. Yes, please. Ah. So now I do need to put username and password. There we go. So I've put that in and then it's it's already added into a library somewhere. I'll have to find out which one. Uh, a part for us to use. Now this is the default you know, user part. Now if I, I've placed U5 on the schematic, so if I go over to PCB and I click this one, which is placing the actual components, U5, this is the footprint that we've got to use. Well, that's pretty cool. So what I would like to do is double check that this is indeed the distance between the pins and everything is, is actually what we want it to be. So let's go into the footprint and we can see that we've got 6.25 millimeters between the switch and the first resistor along the X and then the pitch here is five millimeters between them so it's two and a half millimeters between each one so 6.25 and two and a half so if we go from this oops, center of this pin center of that pin we're in thou okay so press press m to change to metric it doesn't matter if this lines up to the grid because the this tool will actually just snap to the middle there you go at the bottom there of the screen you can see 6.25 millimeters that's great and then we check from the middle of that to the middle of this. And now we've got 2.5 millimeters length. Obviously five when you go to the one. Right, so from that alone, you can sort of trust that this uh, footprint is gonna be fine to use. Excellent. So now we wanna create a better device, you know, sim schematic symbol than just this. So what I'm gonna do is gonna break this apart, decompose. You've got that invisible text now, because I, I, dis I made that invisible. Uh, I'm just going to put it sort of above there so don't forget it. Now I'm going to go into here. I'm going to search for res var, variable resistor. That's not a very good search. Put a dash in there. That's better. <laughs> so I'm going to I'm going to use that as a symbol and I'm also going to search for Single pole, single throw. Switch. I'm just going to use a very simple switch there. Now, I don't want to use these parts of the footprints or anything. I'm just wanna, I just want to use the graphics. So right click, decompose. I'm going to delete the invisible text that I don't care about its properties. Right click, decompose. Delete that delete this, delete that. And I only need one of these target things. That's uh, that's just a sort of like a an origin placement for when you're p placing the part, your mouse will be holding the part in midair at that point. Um, so what I want to do now is essentially create a device, a sort of new device that that is kind of similar to the part that we want to create. Now, the way that I'm going to do that is like so. So now this is a switch and a sort of a resistor, a potential a part all in one. If I just do a X mirror on that, I prefer it the other way. Excellent. So now I can use these symbols. The pins are not correct. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these and I'm going to rename these pins here. Uh, so we've got switch one and switch two. And if we go into here, you see the name and the default pin number. I want to match the pin number. It says a pin number, but it's they've actually given this a bit of a string. So I want to make sure that I'm matching this up with where it's going because that's what links to the uh, footprint. So let's call this one. Oh, 
that one is called com already, cool. And then the default pin number is actually SW1. Excellent. Now, I don't really want that drawn, because you can clearly see what it is. I don't really care what it is on the footprint. This other one, normally open, excellent. So that's uh, just by chance, really. SW2. Pin number matches that pin number. And I'm going to hide it. Done. Now we've got common, I think it's common wiper one. Oh, clockwise, counterclockwise. Wiper. Yeah. If that happens, if the pin numbers, if that label's below there, you can right click Y mirror. It's a bit neater. Okay, so there's there are our pins here. So how do we handle this? Okay, so we have named com SW1 and we have normally open SW2. Now we've got to assign the rest of these pins, but we've only got three elements or three pins here. So we're actually going to turn this into a, a dual gang device. So what I really want to indicate on here is which one's the clockwise and which one's the anti-clockwise or counterclockwise direction. Now if you imagine you are holding this potentiometer, got a better picture maybe, it's upside down, would be better if we had a side on, okay. So if you can imagine this potentiometer right in front of you here, the pins are coming down, so you're holding it and you're looking at it sort of uh, side face. So if you turn this uh, this knob counterclockwise until it's until it seats, you're going to turn the switch off and on at its fully counterclockwise direction. You can imagine turning a dial down; it's always counterclockwise. Um, looking at the recommended PCB layout, we know that pins one and pins two are going to be essentially connected together. So very, very little resistance between pin 1 and 2 um, when the switch is activated. Pins 2 and 3 will have the full resistance there, which is the full 10k. Now, this is important to note because you don't want the amplifier, the second you turn the switch on, to have all the resistance there because that means it will be maximum volume and uh, you'll, you, you'll hurt your ears, basically, uh, the second the switch turns on. And then you'd have to turn it clockwise to turn it down. It would just be backwards. So pin 1 and pin 2, this is, bear in mind, this is the top view. It's almost like an x-ray view looking through the device. You're looking at the, you're looking at the PCB here. Um, pins 1 and 2 will be connected together. And so pin 1 is your counterclockwise pin. Pin 3 is your clockwise pin. So one is your counterclockwise, three is your clockwise. So on this pin, I'm going to call it, uh, let's call that, so if we wanted the bottom one to be ground, this one wants to be clockwise. And I'm not going to give it a default pin number yet. I'm going to call this counterclockwise. Um, for these two, I'm actually going to draw the name. Uh, now, rotate pin name. Oh, that's a shame. I don't know of a way to move the name of the pin. Apart from rotate it. So what I'll do is I'll create a very small note in here and I'm going to call this one clockwise. I'm going to try and make this text ah, small enough. Uh, whilst I'm making this device, I'm going to put it on the smallest, one of the smallest uh, grid sizes there so I can move that nicely and then I'm going to Make, you, you want to do everything in F, F4, but uh, for little text and that kind of thing, you can put it in lower. 
grid snap. Uh, so I'm going to press F2, move it to where I want it to. Okay, so when counterclockwise, you can imagine this arrow sort of moves down. So at the counterclockwise position, we'll have the input to the amplifier connected to ground, which is exactly what we want. Cool. So have I named that CCW? Yep. And then this one is obviously our wiper for both. Excellent. Now I'm going to make the device. I'm going to call this pot dual 10k log and call it RV. I'm going to add the package and the package is actually called uh, that but without the dashes. So if I just search, I don't know, just the first part. Uh, that's the one that we added to our personal libraries, the through hole library. So I'm going to add that one. And then I'm going to add two gates. So this is where you get two sort of gates in one package. If I click into the table, you can see that a B gate has appeared. So we're looking down at the package here. So again, imagine this is, this is the same image as this, apart from it's just rotated. Uh, clockwise. So if you take this and you rotate it 90 degrees clockwise, you've got this. Now imagine that, where that five millimeters, that is your actual shaft. So as you can see, the switch is kind of like distance at the back, but then the shaft is closer to the two uh, rows of thingies. So if you imagine you rotating this counterclockwise, B1 and A1 are going to be connected to B2 and A2. That's what we want in the ground position. Uh, so, what I'm going to do is, so we're on the A potentiometer and the counterclockwise pin is actually A3. So we type in A3 on because it's called A3 uh, on the footprint. The clockwise one is called A1. The wiper is A2. And then the B gate, uh, the counterclockwise one, imagine it that way, is B1. The clockwise direction is B3. Is that right? No, wait, counterclockwise, these are different. I think that should be A1. It's easy to make mistakes here. A3 is the clockwise. And then the counterclockwise, yeah, is that one. The clockwise direction is B3. And the wiper is, the wiper is easy. B2. Right, okay. We've got SW1 and SW2. That, we've only got one switch on the entire device, so I'm going to click the common columns here for both uh, that pin and that pin, which is the common and the normally open. And then that's our package assigned. So now we've done that, we can make the device resistor. And I believe resistors. Variable. Okay, that says it exists, but that's only because I've made it before. Delete and place. Okay, now we're talking. So now I'm going to delete all of this stuff and I'm going to add our custom fields to here, which is this bunch of text. Press OK and I'm going to right click and make device again. Now this is a this is a, a shortcut. If you just press next next and you don't fill this out yet, apart from the package, click next next resistor, place it, delete that, place that. Now it's easier to modify all these properties here than it is in that little table before. So we're going to copy the mouse number and we're going to put the mouse number. That didn't work because I've copied that tiny little space at the end of here. 
here, so I will use a keyboard and not copy that little space at the end. Mouser. That's one. There. And that one is there. And I know the manufacturer part number is just that, but I think it's got dashes in. Yes. So I'll just copy that. The manufacturer is Bonds. Voltage. Now I'm not entirely sure if it lists it quickly and easily then I'm not yeah, let's put twenty volts. Current handling capability, I mean it's two fifty milliwatts for the audio tape. It says audio, it's actually log, but it's in a log approximation. So I'm going to not put the current rating, but I will put the power rating, 25 milliwatts. Tolerance is not applicable. Special, nope. Excellent, right. Component value, I'm going to put 10k. It's obvious that it's a potentiometer, so i just leave it at 10k. Good. Now I press OK and I have to make the device because I've only modified the properties of this local one on the schematic. So right click, make device. Just remake the entire thing and if you go back you can see that these parts are actually filled in now for this particular one. Now if I make that save it, it's just going to save the entire thing. So I double click. Now that's that's been that's pulled straight from the library. Because when I delete it and replace it. It's, it's all still there, it's remembered. So, when we're using this, if I place a second one, you can see I've got RV1A, RV1B, that's the same as the op amp A and B. We've actually created one of those devices. We know that there's only one switch, so that is actually connected to that on the footprint within the device. So when you, actually, when you come to use this, you can add a not connect terminal here which is mainly for your, as the, as the designer, it's mainly for your, you know, benefit. So you don't try to use the, the B version. Cool. Finally, right. Now we've only got one more to do. So if we go back to the presentation and volume potentiometer, we've done that one, excellent. Now we've got a DC jack to add. Uh, we're going to build this DC jack from scratch because we haven't built a component yet from absolute nothing. So that's what I'm going to do this time. Uh, so first things first, as always, go to the website and have a look at the data sheet. This is the device that we'd like to add to our PCB. Pretty simple, that accepts 2.1 and 2.5 millimeter plugs. It's a DC socket, primarily for DC. I'm sure you could pass some AC signals through it if you wanted. Uh, and that's the surface mount land pattern. We're going to go with the through hole one. And it looks like this on the right. We've got nice dimensions to use. And we've got holes, you know, they're only round holes, so we're not having to make any weird shaped pads, which is nice and nice and easy drawing to copy. So the only sort of tricky part of this, that is essentially what we want this thing to look like. So the way, they do, the way these DC jacks work, that's the middle pin. Uh, now that, when you look at the actual device, you've obviously got a middle pin there. So the receptacle, the plug, sorry, has got a hole there, so that's where that pin goes, uh, and then that's what that is, and then this sort of contact here, that's the outer, so that's your outer connection and your inner connection. This is a switch that opens, so when you put a, a, a plug in to here, this switch opens up, and you can use that to disable, um, you can use that to sort of enable and disable different parts of your circuit. So if this is a charger, 
and it's battery powered thing, then you can make it so that when the charger is plugged in, uh, you can't run the device, for example. Um, or you can use it as like a detection for other f functions. So the first thing we're going to do is cre recreate this symbol in Proteus. And the way that we're going to do that is... Now this is sort of up to you, really. As long as you've got the pins on there, you can make these things look however you want them to look. So I'm going to start off with a rough shape and then I'm going to make it better uh, as we go along. So we've got a sort of arrow. lower. Okay, so obviously the most important thing here is that our pins remain on the 0.1 inch grid. You have to put everything on the 0.1 inch grid otherwise your schema schematic elements will start to become messy and not line up properly. So if we were going to put these pins on, we would put a pin there potentially you'd want one there or we could put one there and one there so it doesn't as long as these pins line up on the point one inch grid you can change the grid to something finer to do your the better detail of your parts so what I'm going to do is probably make this a little bit smaller make that smaller and because that doesn't line up in the middle I'm going to go to the finest pitch now that Let's come down one more. So I used boxes really. So you can see the bottom of this box goes through the center and I need to move this down perhaps one more. Now that's just about okay. It's, it's ever so slightly off but you'd never see it which is fine. Uh, so that's that. So I can make that even smaller really. So I'll jump to the slightly higher grid to do that. Cool. Now these, in my opinion, are a little bit too big still, so we can make this look, in, look a little nicer. Okay. And then, and I'm on the half an inch pitch, so because I know that I'm on half inch pitch, I can move these up two, and I know that if I go back to the big grid, I still line up properly on the big grid. Uh, and then I can grab that and I can essentially put it like there. Could even put this, it's a bit more representative if it was down there of, it, of what it actually does, because that disconnects when you put something in. Now that's looking pretty good, so I might even make this a little bit shorter by one. I've somehow caused that to become off grid so I'll jump down to a fine grid it's still off grid I don't know how I've done that so I'm just simply going to redraw it on this one is that looking proportion? You can play with this uh, and you can adjust things as you wish. Uh, so what I am going to do now is create these pins. So I've got pins 1, 2 and 3. So we can, n the number is 1. And that's, we're going to call this one uh, the tip. I will get rid of that text. Uh, I'm going to call this pin here. That's called the shunt, and that's pin number two. And the last one is the sleeve. Pin three. I'm going to not put the name. this. 
and because these numbers are actually at the bottom I'm going to do a Y mirror to move these pins like so. Cool, so that's now looking quite nice. So the next part is to make sure that our footprint is correctly made. So we've got sort of like an outline here, got an outline there, and we've got three holes to place. So to do this, make this a little bit bigger, we firstly want to place these holes. That's a 1.6 millimeter hole. So that's what the foot that's what the uh, footprint is calling for. So if we go into through hole pad here and we if you don't already have a uh, 1.6 millimeter you know correctly sized hole what you can do is create a new one. So you click C and then you can call it one mm six and then that's the whole uh, sort of diameter but now we want to do the annulus ring diameter let's go with 2.2 millimeters to start with this is just the name of it this doesn't specify anything about it it's just so that we know what we're looking at uh, So if we put in the diameter there is 2.2 uh, millimetres and the drill hole was 1.6 millimetres and then NM file and press OK. Oh, I edited the wrong one. Uh, what's the default there? Okay, so that's the one that I've just created. Uh, actually, I, I meant to put it in the diameter. I must put it in the drill mark. Uh, so the diameter wants to be 1.6 millimeters. The drill hole. I keep getting this wrong. That's the drill hole. The diameter is 2.2. That's the pad. So. 1.6 mil diameter for grey and then 2.2 for the purple. Now if I wanted to modify that a bit because I want to increase the annulus ring a little bit, you can double click it, see that I'm using 1mm6 2.2 shit at the top um, I'll actually put 1.6 millimetres just to keep in line and then I can make that say 2.6 and that's made the annulus thicker so I think that looks better so there's our start now we want to play we want to place this one here so we've got 3.1 millimeters between the center of that and the center of that we've got 3.1 between the center of that and the center of that so replicate x step uh, sorry that's 6.2 millimeters along the x-axis and that's going to replicate that pin 6.2 millimeters along the x-axis and it's going to do it once and it's going to remain the same on the y-axis so press ok it's replicated it now I can do the same again replicate I want one copy but this time I want it to come down by 5 millimeters and across by 3.1 so down by 5 is minus 5 millimeters and across is 3.1 millimeters. Okay, so these these are now in the right place. Now I can call them one, two, and three. There's a little tool to do this. It's, for three pins, it doesn't really matter, but when you're doing a whole microcontroller, this tool is quite useful. Name generator. So the string is if you want to have a prefix to the, you know, prefix to the pin. Like if it's like, I don't know, ADC. And then when you click OK, it does ADC1, ADC2, ADC3. We don't care about that. Uh, no string, and we want this string to count. We'll start counting at 1. So when you press OK, every time you click a pin, it names it 1, names it 2, names it 3. It's just a quick and easy way to name your pins. Uh, OK. The only thing left to do now is the 
silk screen. So we can see that. Uh, let's have a look on here. That's the only drawing that we've got. So we've got 7.5 from that front face, 3.4 and 3.1 to the middle, but you can see the silk screen just goes slightly off a little bit more than the uh, pin at the back there, so that's what we'll do. So what I'm going to do is create a silk screen that's a square to start with, just to get, just to rough in the the design. So it's going to be 7.5 plus 3.1 plus 3.1. Now that would be from the edge to the very centre of that pin. And then the width of the silk. So we can use this front actually. So we've got 9 millimetres on that side as well. Actually, 14. It might, it might end up being about 14.5 there. Okay, so in fact, because the actual device is uh, fourteen point five, we'll 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 do it fourteen point five, and we'll do it by nine as well. So we can see at the bottom there, you've got I'll make that maximize so we can see the entire thing. So we've got width. So looking down here, we've got width and height. Uh, I've not got it in the right snap for 0.5, but it's 14.9. So about that, and that's 14. So if I change the grid snap now, can't do it whilst I'm drawing. Oh, I can. Just couldn't see it. So it's 14, 14.5, 14 because I changed the grids. Like so. Let's go finer. So that's our rough outline. Now, if we remember, we can because it's it's kind of like the silk screen outline. We don't need to be hyper accurate with it. We can sort of rough in and see uh, where this outline goes. So that outline finishes just past the center point of that. So if that's center, so that looks about right. And then this one finishes quite far. So that's the center of the hole. Yeah, this is the hole as well. So it's quite far to the edge of that hole. It's probably about there, actually. Just out of curiosity, does that line up? I can't see. From the center of here to the silk is 4.5. There is 4. Okay, so that does. That's that's exactly aligned in the middle. So that's fine. So we've got silk screen running through these holes, not ideal. So I'm going to redraw this entire shape, but finish the silk screen just outside of these holes. I can't remember if I did one there. I didn't. So there we go. Now for for a quick and easy DC jack, that'll do. So I'm going to call it its name there. So I'm going to right click make package. I'm going to create it in the through hole library. And I'm going to call it that. And it is a connector and it is through hole. Excellent. So now I've got that package to use. One, two, three. Pins are correct. Da, da, da. One, two, three. Okay, nearly there. So change this back to the 0.1 inch grid. You should always be in 0.1 inch on this side to make sure everything aligns and keeps things neat. Um, now I can make this device. Right click, make device. I'm going to call this, uh, I'm going to give it the actual name of it at the end, but I'm going to call it uh, Jack DC 20 volts. Must have a current rating or power perhaps. Two amps. Now it's rated 12 volts. It's not the absolute maximum. So I'm going to call it 12 volts because 
right, so the designer's discretion to uh, use more or less voltage based on that recommended. Find that. We saved it in through hole. That's fine. We know that the pins are correct because we named our pins on this side and we named our pads on the other side. So one, two, three, tip, shunt, sleeve. Tip, shunt, sleeve. Good stuff. I'm going to make the device first fully. I'm going to save it in connector. I'm going to save it connector and I'm going to create a new because there's not any thing in here called barrel. Well, you'll have to create a new category, subcategory called barrel because that doesn't exist. So it's a, a type of barrel connector. Save it in there, place it here, and then the very familiar process of putting our parts in there. Make device, package, value, uh, no, actually, the value is what appears on the schematic. Voltage, recommended voltage is 12 volts. Current is 2 amps. Now, I'm actually, I'm going to... You would typically put the maximum ratings in here. Mm, no, nah, that's fine. I'll leave it. Power, leave that. Tolerance, not applicable. Manufacturer. Cliff electronic components. Factory part number is that stockist funnel stockist part number that special nothing about that generic no save that connector replace done click done okay so we got there let's have a quick check over this uh, yep yeah, excellent so that was the last part to place um, so that's the four components that I wanted to cover. So we've made uh, some from scratch. Um, we have modified existing components. We've sort of mashed together some, uh, you know, devices. Uh, we've created a dual gate component there. Uh, so many different ways to make components, but this is kind of like the standard that you want to create for your own schematics so that it's clear, concise, well made, the footprints will work, the pins are in the right place and when you create your devices or you create your PCBs you know that uh, everything will go together. So thank you very much.